Hi everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of the Tiny Brains podcast. I'm Kevin Joyce, CEO at Tiny Brains, and with me is Peter Graham, the Brigadier of Brains. Hello. So, uh, as we always do, we're going to look back at some of the top news stories in XR from the previous week, and we're going to dive in with some Pico news. Um, so the Pico 4 Ultra SDXR Super Mega version was announced uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, originally it was announced only for launch in China, but now, now, we have more dates. <laughs> yes, uh, Europe and Asia Pacific, uh, and it's not far away from launch so it's gonna it's gonna hit those regions so let, let's specify the regions first so you, you're looking at the uk most of europe so germany france italy and then you're looking in asia pacific places like japan south korea thailand a lot of a lot of those places and it's all gonna arrive on the 20th of september which is not so i haven't yet tried the pico 4 ultra s s d s whatever pico 4 ultra I haven't tried it yet, um, but I've always been pretty keen on Pico. I always feel like they're a decent competitor to the Quest in terms of what they do, not necessarily in terms of market share, but in terms of what they do. Um, so I'm pretty keen on this. Um, what are your thoughts, Pete? I do like Pico. I haven't tried the new Ultra, just like yourself. The the one, I suppose the one downside with Pico is its library. It's it's It always lags behind the Quest. Um, they don't really have any exclusives. Uh, ByteDance don't like produce any of their own in-house or first-party titles, so it's always um, waiting for developers to port it port it over. So the 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 content lineup isn't as strong, but I think for for those looking for an alternative to a Meta Quest, this is this is it. This is going to be your this is going to be your headset. Yeah, the, the, this is true about the content. Um, uh, Pico and ByteDance uh, do invest a lot in bringing content from other platforms to the Pico, but it is just that it's ports of existing titles from PC VR and uh, PlayStation VR and Quest. It's not original games. So yeah, um, but yeah, like like you rightly said, it's a good alternative regardless. There are there are a couple of little little perks, little extras to the new Four Ultra. Pre-orders are now open, so you can, uh, if you want to pre-order, which there it costs about five hundred and thirty pound in the UK or six hundred pound six hundred euros in Europe. If you pre-order, you get the free a set of Pico motion trackers. So you, they are attached to your legs and you can track your legs or actually you can attach them to objects and they'll, it'll object track as well. The other little bonus is that the in store in the internal storage is 256 gig, which means that it's own it while the price is 50 pounds more in the UK than the base model three, you're actually getting more gig. So your base model is 125, 128 gig for the Meta 3, uh, Meta Quest 3. So, you know, they're, they're, they've sandwiched it right in between both models of the three, haven't they, with the, with the 256 gig. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's more expensive than the base model, but cheaper than the three's top end model. So, And everybody always likes more gigs. <laughs> Especially when there's no expandable storage in, in some headsets. Indeed. Okay, so moving on, we have more headset news. This one's a bit different, though. It's uh, going back to Meta again. Yes, this is uh, well. It's if you're if you've been following the VR industry for years, you'll know that uh, a lot of sites and a lot of influencers and everyone else looks for certifications. They'll look for places like the FCC where companies will have to register their products before launch, and this is a good way to tell when a product is going to come out or confirming that a product is coming out. And the FCC over in the States have recently published certification. Um, it was, yes, only only a few days ago, the new uh, Meta documents for a new Meta headset. And as we all know, with Connect coming up, we are expecting the 3S. So this looks like almost 100% confirmation before Meta says anything that... Endless amounts of shock here. Um, watch my sarcasm. Um, <laughs> we know it's coming, right? We, well, we know something's coming. It's probably 
quest free S. <laughs> no surprises. Yeah, yeah. Either that or it's a certification for, you know, another headset, which is probably unlikely. You know, I know we're, we're hearing a, there's going to be an AR headset uh, revealed, but this was specifically for VR, so. It's also too soon for that. <laughs> yeah. As we discussed last week. Um, moving on, another thing we discussed last week, watch that segue, um, the, uh, the Surreal Touch um, surreal touch is surreal touch yes it is um it was a kickstarter that we talked about last week that um we i believe if i recall correctly we both liked the idea of it but had some issues with how well it might perform um in terms of the software uh, compatibility for it now it's a uh input device for the apple vision pro and it's a kickstarter that as i say we talked about last week and we wished them luck and they got it Yes, so they've the the uh, Kickstarter has only been running for about a week and a half, and their goal was fifty thousand dollars. That was their that was their goal, which is to be fair, is quite low for any type of hardware Kickstarter. They've already surpassed that; they're up to ninety k, and they've still got over a month to go until the end of the uh, until the end of the campaign. So they they should be easily funded. Or have enough surplus money so that they, you know, shouldn't have any issues. Hopefully, so congratulations, guys. We hope it actually does what you're expecting it to do. And I'm going to add a little update because we weren't too sure about the software. They do actually part of the package is what they call Surreal Link, and they this will link to Steam VR, so they can actually place PC VR games like Half Life Alex inside your Apple Vision Pro. So would be awesome. That should be awesome, yeah. But presumably, I haven't seen this, I'll be honest. Presumably, it's just like on a screen inside the Vision Pro. Yeah, it looks like it's a flat screen. I think it seems like it's a flat screen. I, I would imagine so. Uh, right, uh, so moving on to the next one. Hitman. Yay! Uh, yes, it, this, is a, this is a real shame. One of the big games coming out this month was Hitman 3 VR Reloaded from... Well, it was IO Interactive originally, but it's XR Games that were doing the port to Quest 3. And the reviews are out. And normally we don't generally tend to cover reviews uh, and what the feedback from games, unless we've actually... Two played. former journalists, we don't generally talk about reviews. <laughs> but it's such a big game, such a big IP, and all the reviews have now dropped, and they've dropped like... An absolute, an actual bomb. You know, there, it, it, there's not been. I haven't seen much praise for it, any way, shape, or form. Essentially, it's just like the original PSVR version. Yes, it's on Quest, but it doesn't do anything better. In fact, some some places are saying it's it's worse. It's just it, it's just it's just it's just a mess, um, which is real really bad. <laughs> some places even said it's next level bad. So. Take from that. Yeah, it, it seems to be we often have this case in VR. We've uh, obviously I've, I've been working in VR for more than ten years now, and Pete, I think you're about eight, right? And um, it's often been this case where you see an IP and you think that would be perfect for VR, but mechanically, these these things just just don't work. And I, I feel like Hitman is one of those IPs, one of those um, experiences that you think on the surface, yes, that would be incredible. All the sneaking around and assassinations and improvising and plotting your own path through through puzzles and whatever else. But mechanically, adapting that to VR, you're better off just starting from scratch. Yeah. Which is why I'm hoping that some of the big titles coming out later this this year will undo some of that damage from Hitman. You know, titles like Batman and Alien, we're hoping. Batman, Alien, Behemoth. Some of those, the, these are these are all have all been designed from the ground up for it. So. I'm still not sold on Batman, gotta say. But anyway, that's a talk for another time. Um, we're going to wrap up with another piece of gaming news, which is one that I don't know anything about. So, Pete, you jump in. Well, you probably know about the studio though. In a space, I do, yeah. uh, these these guys are a French team, and they're most famous for doing a Fisherman's Tale. Uh, quite a few years ago and then they did a follow-up as well and i i love the original fisherman's tale the, the second one was all right but the first one I, I really enjoyed it it was a little puzzle game 
they're doing something slightly different this time. The, the next game is One True Path, and this is a post-apocalyptic Western shooter. And One True Path has been revealed this week, and it's coming out later this month for Quest 3 and PC VR. So, yeah, there's... A very short time span between announcement and release. Do you know if it's self-published? Do they have a publisher on board? What's the, what's the deal there? Because originally they worked with Vertigo. I, I think they, oh, I believe they might still be working with Vertigo. I, I don't know 100% for sure. But yes, it is. A, they've only released uh, a very short trailer at the moment. So and so details are a little bit thin on the ground for a game that's coming out in possibly only a couple of weeks. There's no been no firm date for this month, just that it's coming out later in September. So it's all a, all a little bit hush, uh, cloak and dagger at the moment. Well, we wish them the best. Uh, whatever their marketing plan is, it's it's different. So uh, we'd love to see it. Um, and that's all we've got for this week on the Tiny Brains podcast. If you would like to talk about any of the stories uh, that we've discussed today, or if you have something interesting that you'd like to discuss on this podcast, please reach out to us in any of the millions of ways you can find us online. We are perpetually online, um, so pretty easy to reach. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you again next week.